Welcome to episode 30 of America in Crisis, Breaking the Cycle of Addiction. My name is David Hunt and I'm your host. I would like to start by updating you on the number of opioid related deaths in Middlesex County. According to the Office of Middlesex County District Attorney Marion Ryan, we have had 93 deaths from January 1st to May 11th. This is up four deaths in the same time period from 2001. I would like to welcome Julie Gage. Julie is the Executive Director of the Janes L. McEwen Boys and Girls Clubs in Woburn. Julie has been involved with the club since 2004. Julie served as both the Arts and Education Director and the Director of Program Development prior to assuming the role of Executive Director. Julie is a graduate of Bates College, program at Boston University. Her club programs have been honored for excellence nationally and she has also received regional professional recognition outside of the club. Julie enjoys spending time with her family and friends. She also volunteers her time for the Relay for Life of Woburn and for Woburn's Coalition Against Substance Abuse. Julie, welcome to my show. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for having me. Thank you. First, I would like to say the club has come a long way since I was a member. Growing up, offering many programs I've never even seen 30 years ago. <laughs> How does the club basically help kids from falling into the opioid epidemic? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the opi opioid crisis is a, is a big problem in our community. It's always been around, but it's definitely been heightened. And from what I've read in the research that I've done, it's even more heightened since the COVID public health crisis. And um, I think what we try to do at the club is provide a place where kids can build res relationships um, and have a support system and a place, a, a physical place where they can go and um, develop positive and healthy habits that will hopefully carry them through adulthood and give them the skills and tools they need when they're faced with, you know, peer pressures and other things as they get older to help them, you know, avoid risky behaviors. So why is this so important for a safe place after school? There are numerous places in the city they can go, yep. but you have a safe environment. Why is that so important? Yeah, especially, I mean, especially nowadays, I think when the club first opened back in 1964, actually, we're going to have our 60th anniversary in a couple of years, but it was just a place where kids could do sports and that was kind of it. But as time has gone on, you know, more and more families, we see a lot more single parent families or parents who, uh, families that have two parents, but both are working. And so if work gets out at five and school gets out at 2.30, yeah. kids can find themselves in a lot of trouble after school and, um, We've really seen, over the, especially over the past couple of decades, that that need for academic support to stay on track with their homework, especially a, a single parent, you know, mom and dad don't want to do homework when they get home at yeah. 7 o'clock at oh, night, yeah, so course. we can fill the void and help them get all those positive things done, get their homework done, have fun with friends, have a nutritious snack after school. It's really important to support families because the community is better when yeah. families are healthier, and families are healthier, kids will be healthier. Uh, so it's so really about supporting the whole family and the community, not just the young people. No, that makes a lot of sense. What can you tell me about the club? I understand. I know when I was in it, you had a game room. Yep. Do we have one now? We do. We do. Yep. Just like a lot of our alumni are happy to know that the games room is still the, the heart of the club. Um, that's where you see all the pool tables and ping pong tables. But really what happens there is friendship. You know, kids are are um, having some agency, making friends, showing responsibility by borrowing equipment and returning it in good condition. And um, that's really where a lot of the character building happens at the club. It's something that we're really proud of and that has been the sort of the heart of the building then and it's still the heart of the building now. What kind of games can I expect? They still get that bumper pool thing? Yep, bumper pool is popular, it, ping pong, It's still billiard. there for when I was a kid. Or did Might we be a different table, but the game has not changed. Okay. <laughs> yep, all kinds of board games. Now, you know, with electronics, we have, you know, Xbox and different video games like oh, that. Oh, they get video. To, yeah, we try to be screen free as much as possible, but video games and other electronics do help the kids get into the club. So we do, we do use them occasionally. As far as physical activity, I understand you have a much larger pool than we had before. Yes. It's a lucky pool somewhere. Yep, yep. You should have a video. Yep. Oh, there it is on the screen now. Oh, great, yeah. Oh God, that's changed since I've been a member. Yep, quite a bit. It's still called Lucky's Pool. It's after yeah. one of the club's founders, um, Lucky Ryan and our swim team is actually Lucky's Lobsters. And so the pool is in the same location that it was original in the 60s, um, but it's much wider now. We used to be five lanes, now we have six lanes. It's also a little bit deeper. So we're really proud of our, um, our swim program. 
Swimming is a really great sport for kids. It's really about goal setting. They're always trying to beat their own personal best, really teaching them that, that goal setting that will hopefully carry them into adulthood. And we're also really proud to be able to serve the whole community with the pool. We have um, both Woburn High School and Winchester High School um, swim teams utilize this pool for both practices and meets. So it really is a whole community asset. That's very nice. And I know uh, the gym's in the lodge. I've been in it for a couple of the events you've put on for the community. What can you tell us about the gym? Yeah, that sure. We should have a picture somewhere coming up shortly. Yeah, the hey. gym is, is great. It's, it's, it's big. I joke and call it the Tajma gym. <laughs> oh, there we are. Yeah, we're very fortunate. So it's the Keith Callahan Memorial Gymnasium, uh, named after Keith Callahan, who was killed in action. And um, we have two full-size basketball courts. Basketball is still definitely among the most popular sports in Woburn. So um, we have quite a, quite a nice little intramural uh, basketball program in the winter for kids in grades two through, um, through eight. And right now we actually have a high school intramural basketball program going on. And it's just great to have the two full-size courts in the old facility. Um, if you weren't really a basketball player, you didn't really get a lot of physical activity, especially in the winter time. Now we can still run basketball, which is popular and brings kids and families in. But also we have a whole other half where we could have the girls running club and floor hockey and all the other things that kids uh, might like, like to get involved in to keep themselves healthy and fit. Actually, can you elaborate that on that for the girls hockey? Yeah. What's that involved? Because it's competitive or they just go and play? Yeah, mostly what we do at the club is all intramural. And so we're just trying to expose kids to a lot of different types of activity activities. Um, it's all included in the membership price. We don't charge any extra fees for any of that. So really what we're trying to do is expose kids, especially who, ha who might have limited fin financial means, to a bunch of different activities. And then if they decide to develop and go out and try out for one of Woburn's travel leagues or okay. something in the future, great. But at least we had a chance to expose them, let them try different things and understand you know, what they might be interested in um, so that they could pursue it in the future. I've got a couple of other programs I understand. What can you tell me about before and after the bell? What's that about? Oh yeah, sure. Before and after the bell are both terrific programs uh, that we're very proud of. So before the bell is a before school program that we offer in conjunction with um, both the Malcolm White Elementary School and the Shamrock Elementary School and right here at Woburn Memorial High School. It's really great. The high school students enroll in a class called PE Leadership. Okay. They then attend the school in the morning for their first period where they serve as mentors and role models. They develop lesson plans okay. and engage the elementary kids in fitness activities. And then they all enjoy breakfast together at school before the high schoolers come back for second period and the elementary kids go to their, go to their classrooms for the day. It's just a great way to start the day on the right foot um, we know that when kids are fed and when they've had a chance to get some energy out, they're certainly going to be much more prepared to learn in the classroom. So that program is really about getting kids ready to learn and ready for their school day. And after the bell is a program that we offer at the Shamrock Elementary okay. School. It's a free academic enrichment program that's funded by the Department of Education. And um, we take the children whose teachers recommend that they need the support the most and bring them in and do high yield learning activities, plus some fun. There's also a snack and, and fun things, but we really try to make learning fun, give them the academic support that they need so that they can stay on track with the rest of their classmates and, and really be successful academically and enjoy learning and feel you know, a part of the school community. Yeah, it's a wonderful program. So everything you mentioned, it sounds like a very healthy alternative from kids going on the street, hanging around with their friends. Absolutely. I mean, you know what it leads to? The kids are good, someone, okay, hey, I got a bottle of beer, let's pass it around. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, a soft core drug gets passed around. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, a hard core drug gets passed around. Right. But right. they're just, they're afraid to say no, and that temptation is just there. Right. So you're basically eliminating that scenario by giving them a healthy place. Absolutely, absolutely. And especially for our older students, you know, we have a big teen population. We're pretty proud that it's pretty unique among after school programs to have kids who are older. You know, oftentimes when kids get to middle school, you know, they're able, they're old enough to go home. Um, but we really, because of the relationships that kids build at the club with the staff and volunteers, they want to keep coming. And so it's great. Actually, 30% of our members are teenagers, which is awesome. It's really something that we're proud of to keep them in the, in the yeah. club, keep those relationships strong so that they know how to say no when something yeah. like that happens. And to keep their interest. I mean, if they're interested in something they're not going to look for something else yeah, absolutely Dave. and sometimes yep. something else isn't the best answer for what they absolutely. should be doing absolutely yep spot on now we've talked about winter programs 
I'm looking outside, it's gotta be 90 tomorrow. <laughs> what can you tell me about summer programs? Sure, yeah. About summer yet? Yep, summer's a big time yeah. at the club. It's busy because as you know, parents are working all day, school's out, so the club's gotta be in. So um, in the summer, we transitioned to a full day program. Um, just last year, actually, in response to the COVID pandemic, we started a program called Team Summer. So it's a little different than your traditional summer camp. In the morning, what we're doing is um, some academic programming. It's called Summer Brain Gain. So okay. it's, it's fun learning um, and also a program called Smart Moves that really um, is some social emotional learning. So we really developed it to help kids get back on track both with um, some of the behavior challenges that we were seeing as a result of the COVID pandemic and kids being stuck at home and also some of the academic needs. We all know that they didn't, you know, kids fell behind academically as a result of being at home too. So, and it was very, very successful. In the afternoon, after the curriculum, in the afternoon, we have all the traditional fun things, the arts and crafts, the <laughs> swimming, the sports, and all of that, um, all of that great, great stuff in the afternoon. So it's a little twist on a traditional summer camp and um, it's great, it's very popular. We Registration opens on March 1st every year for okay. summer. Um, it fills up very, very fast, so we're sold out. We've been sold out for weeks, but um, we're very much looking forward to, to serving the kids. We'll serve 180 kids total this summer, 90 in July, and then another 90 Good, kids in August. Huge accomplishment. Yeah, it's great. Now, when I went to the club, obviously it was many years ago, and it was, no. <laughs> uh, I just don't look it. But, <laughs> but the whole catch is, when I went, it wasn't really structured. Sure. We go in, you pick the pool, you pick the game room, you do what you want. Is this more structured now? When I go, if I walk in on Saturday morning, what are you going to throw at me to do? Sure, yeah. yeah please it's, explain everything that I could possibly do on a Saturday morning. Yeah, that's great. Um, at really what happens at the club, it's still very much that way. There's choices at every hour. Okay. So different than some of your other um, after school opportunities that kids have. At the club, kids have agency to make their own choice. Okay. And so if you're not an athlete, we're never gonna force you to go into the gym and play soccer. We're gonna encourage you to make you know diverse choices so that we can try to expose you to different things and keep you healthy, but really you get to make your own choice. So at, at any given hour, there might be computer coding going okay. on in the computer room. There might be cultural art happening in the art room and maybe you're making a print of you know, a, a fabric that's from Africa or something. And then in the gym, there might be a dodgeball game going yep. on. So at every hour, the, ro the choices rotate and kids get to check the schedule. They're learning how to tell time. Okay, 30 more minutes until soccer. And they're really learning responsibility and creating their own schedule that way. So yes, in the activities are very structured, but the kids get to make their own okay. choices about which areas, which areas they, they want to get involved in, which is just really great. It's really uh, the, sometimes the first time for a kid, especially when a kid joins the club, it might be the first time that mom or dad or grandma doesn't say, okay, we're going to soccer now. They're yeah. making that choice on their own and really, really maturing. Yeah, it's great. Well, good responsibility for choices. Yeah, absolutely, yep. A lot of choices we make in life, and so we're teaching them to make positive ones at a young age. Now you have something I hear called the LEAP program. Yeah. What is it and is there a cost for that? There is, yep. So when we renovated the club in 2018, we knew we wanted to um, add a childcare center. Uh, we wanted to reach families at a younger age. We wanted to expose children to the club, um, you know, before they turn eight years old. So this is our opportunity to do that. Um, and it fills a gap, you know, there's a, especially right now as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, yes. there's a real shortage of, of child care. So we're really proud to have done that. Um, we, it's a preschool and a pre-K. Okay. So we have two classrooms. Uh, we serve about 23 students per day. Uh, preschool is sort of 2.9 to four years old. And then pre-K is the kids who are going to be going into kindergarten next year. So it's really about socialization. Um, learning their letters, things like that. In the pre-K classroom, our teachers are getting them ready for September. Right now, we, you know, they have a couple months to go, so they're making sure they have all their letters, all their social skills wrapped up. And there is a cost associated. It's pretty on, on par with, um, with other preschool programs okay. in Woburn. Um, and yeah, we, ha we also have financial assistance available um, okay. if people are interested. But um, yeah, so we start as young as 2.9. So families wow. who are new to the community or have young children certainly are uh, welcome to check it out and come visit us and see it for themselves. Now, the most important question I have to ask you, <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> it always comes down to this, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm there all day, I'm running around, I'm exercising, using all my energy. Do you offer food? We have. We I do. don't have to bring my hibachi <laughs> back and sneak it in. We do. We have our. So right now our program goes until 6 p.m. 
Um, and so at all of our locations, at the school programs okay. and at the club, um, every child is offered a free nutritious snack after school. Um, a lot of kids, pack, you know, if they need extra, they'll pack it for them. But um, and occasionally, especially for our teens, on a Friday night, yeah. we'll include, if we have a special going on, we'll include dinner. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's like a barbecue next week for some of the kids. But yes, every day after school, every child that attends our programs does get a, a nutritious mm -hmm. snack to help help them until dinner time comes and mom and dad come and get them. No, that's great. They need yeah. after all that energy. Absolutely. No, what are some of the other programs? I mean, I know there's so much to talk about. Any other programs that we haven't mentioned that you'd like to uh, share with our audience? Yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, we go have right a, ahead. We've got plenty of time. Go right ahead. Yeah, no, we have. Um, in addition to the, you know, sports and rec, we did talk a little bit about it, but we have a great art room and a STEM room, and so at every hour, there's always something fun going on in there. Kids love building and making things, um, so engineering programs where they're using recycled materials to try to build the tallest tower and yeah. just using those critical thinking skills. Um, is really popular than technology. You know, we have computer coding yep. where kids are sort of coding their own robot to go forward and back or maybe making their own video game on the computer um, because technology is important. That's these kids need to have those skills to in their future, hopefully for their future careers. And so we try to expose them to it, but in a fun way um, and get them thinking about that. And so that's great. We also have a great, just yesterday, actually, we had some teenagers who went down to Boston. They've been participating in an entrepreneurship program at the club and learning about um, developing a product and making creating their own business models wow yeah so that was really great they got to go down to um, Suffolk and present and answer questions about their projects and um, it's really neat yeah a lot of people say I don't think about that a lot of people think swim and gym yeah. when you think Boys and Girls Club but really it's so much more than that community service learning is also a big thing that we do we have a gemstones club for elementary yeah. Torch Club for middle school, and Keystone Club for high school. And those kids on a weekly basis meet, develop their leadership skills, go through some curriculum, and put on um, community service projects yeah. for the community. Right now, they're, the elementary kids are doing a food drive to benefit the Council of Social Concerns. Nice. So we're trying to teach them that they're part of a much bigger community and that even though they're, they're still in school, they can start giving back to their community now. Yeah, remember, it's never too early. I remember Keystone participating with Relay. That's right, yes. Yeah. Yep, they're getting involved. They're all, always out at every event that we can think of in Woburn, the Keystone Club and Torch Club, whether it's marching in the parades to support yeah. veterans or Memorial Day, participating in walks, different things like that. They, we love to get them out in the community. Do you think it's giving them a better attitude going forward when they're community oriented, doing good things for people? Absolutely, I think that when you have, a, when you really, it all is about relationships. And when you have a positive support network around you and by being a part of this club that meets weekly with like-minded kids who also have positive attitudes and want to give back to the community, you just feel, um, I think the kids feel really supported by their peers and by the adults at the club. And I just think that helps carry them through life, whether it's school, sports, whatever. Just having that support network, I think, is a big deal. Yeah. It was growing up, I was exposed to multiple things and to get an interest. And yeah, all of them I didn't like. Some of them fun, I got to try them out. Yeah. But then when I got out of school and I went into business, I'm like, you know, this seems so good. I want to do this myself. And it was a good role. I mean, I did. I was a member of the club back when Glenn Sterling was there, sure, yeah. and I mean, he was awesome. He's a good role model. But the thing was, I had choices. I was exposed to things, and as a kid, I'm like, this seems interesting. Let's see how far I can take this. Yep. And that's what I like about the coding. I mean, I have to be honest. As people remember, I had the Stoneham Wakefield Boys and Girls Club in here before, and they were talking about coding. And to get a kid interested at such an early age in something and exposed to it, who might say, hey. I think I'd like to do this for a living, or at least explore it. When yeah. I'm going to college, I'd like to explore this area of robotics or computer programming. And it just gives the kids something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think that's a great idea, exposing them to this. Yeah, absolutely. We're just always trying, you know, trying new ways to keep kids engaged, um, get them exposed to something that maybe their family doesn't have the means to bring them to or teach them about. And like I said, if it's something that they really want to develop a more intensity with, then that's great. We have referrals and we can help families find other resources where the kids can continue to pursue these goals and in these dreams. Mm -hmm. But I really do think it's just about trying to get them acclimated mm -hmm. um, and expose them to a lot of different things in science. And we always try to make it fun. 
right? Like we, we do um, a fun program with art history, right? Where the kids um, will lay underneath the table and paint on their back, you know? And then in, and it's after they've read a book about, you know, Michelangelo and they're learning about the Sistine Chapel. And yes. so we hope that someday, maybe they'll be in college and take an art history class and say, oh, I remember I learned about that at the Boys and Girls Club, you know? We're just trying to throw in little tidbits of, of education along the way, but always making it fun and so that the kids want to continue showing up, right? <laughs> I, no, I'm not going to name names, obviously, but mm -hmm. I know a lot of people in Woburn that have gone to the club mm -hmm. that went with me and barely see them, but you read about them in the paper, and they've gone on to do great things, mm -hmm. and they got their start at the club because yep. they got a good environment. Right. Yeah, we're very proud, and we're always looking for alumni to get back involved. So yeah. if there's alumni out there like you, Dave, that yeah. want to contribute and come back and share, you know, mm -hmm. we're even career exploration, come and talk to our teens about what you do for a career so that we can just continue exposing the kids to things where alumni are always welcome home at the club and welcome to get involved. Somebody will look into that. We're, Absolutely. I'll squeeze you into that nice schedule with all that spare time yeah, I have yeah. <laughs> between Relay, Festival <laughs> of the Common, Lions Parade, oh boy. Monster Dash, yeah. Yeah, I'll get some time in some I'm fun. sure, I'm sure. <laughs> Let's see, what, what else do I want to know about the club? Obviously, it's a beautiful club. You just put a million something dollars into it. Yeah. What does it cost yearly, roughly, to get this club continuing to run? I know you're not making it on the memberships, that's for sure. That's right, yep. Uh, yeah, our annual budget is about $1.7 million. Whoa. Yep, it's very expensive. Um, and so we do a lot of fundraising. I know we're going to talk about that in a yep, minute. Yeah, well, absolutely. Um, and so it's we really have a diverse, a diverse, diverse revenue streams, if you will, um, whether it's fundraising events or grants or some of our program uh, fees on the childcare side, facility rentals. It's pretty diverse how how we get that done. But it's a lot of hard work, oh, yep. and we have a wonderful board of directors who helps us get it done. I know you just did the pot of gold. Yeah, we did. Hey, what can you tell us about that while we got worried on there? Yeah, year? sure. Yeah, pot of gold is one of our big biggest fundraisers. Uh, that's how we celebrate St. Patrick's Day mm -hmm. and everyone in Woburn associates St. Patrick's Day with Pot of Gold. So um, yeah, it's been our, we've been doing the Pot of Gold raffle actually for more than 20 years, which we're really proud of. It was started by David Ryan, who's a former member of our board of directors. And um, the way it works these days is the grand prize is $20,000 okay. that we give out right around St. Patrick's Day every year. But we also have a series of bonus prizes. So a raffle ticket costs $100. We sell a maximum of 1,500 tickets, so the mm -hmm. odds are really, really great. Yeah. Um, and the real winners are the kids. Of so. course, yeah. <laughs> but we actually, for 12 weeks leading up to that grand drawing, we give away $1,000 a week. So that keeps it interesting. Everyone's always, every Thursday morning, the phone's ringing, who won last night? We do do the drawings live on social media, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really our biggest, uh, our biggest fundraiser. We haven't been able to have our St. Patrick's Day party yeah. for three years now. <laughs> So we miss it, but we're really hoping that in 2023, we'll be back at the club for our St. Patrick's Day party. I know one of the ones I miss personally, I've volunteered in, is freezing for a reason of the oh, polar plunge. Yep, that's a good one. <laughs> well, it's good because I can help out volunteering and I don't have to run in <laughs> ice cold water in a bathing suit. <laughs> that's right, Cold absolutely. water or not, nobody wants to see me in a bathing suit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, that's a good one. We haven't been able to do that either. A lot of our in-person stuff has been put on hold, but um, we've been powering through anyway. So sure maybe someday be we'll be back in the pond again. i got to find a way to get your role so that I don't have to go in the pond. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I'm medical. That's why we have the fire department. Yeah. They're going to do the rescue. Thank goodness. We're very appreciative for your they help gotta be with on that. got to be on dry land before <laughs> I touch them. <laughs> so, uh, I un okay, we talked about the raffle. The club is beautiful. It takes a lot of money, obviously. Do you have corporate supporters? Yeah, we do. Yep, we have a number of corporate supporters. There's a, um, you know, we talked about some of our events. We have the, the Kickin' for Kids, the Pot of Gold Raffle. You mentioned the Polar Plunge. Yep. We also have a golf tournament um, that's in memory of DLMR. And companies can get involved in any of those events as a sponsor. For every event we have, we have a sponsorship menu. And so we have a lot of, Woburn is just, so generous. The business community is terrific to us, and we're very lucky to have to have since, their support. Since I'm a non-golfer, sure. I mean, my opinion is mm -hmm. golf is old men and ugly shots walking. <laughs> we know that. And my talent with a golf club, uh, lack thereof. What can you tell us how it works? What is it a regular golf thing or is it a shootout or what is it? Yeah, so we do. A, uh, I'm not a golfer either, so I'm speak. I might be speaking out of turn here, but we do a. Um, 
We do a bramble format. Okay. We actually host it up at the Kernwood Country Club. Oh, nice. This is actually our, this year in 2022 will be a 40th anniversary. And so that tournament is in memory of Dennis Marr, who was the first president of the Boys and Girls Club. And uh, we run an afternoon session. We have a lot of local companies that come out and send out, send out foursomes. And um, it's a great day. We have some great sponsors. We have contests out on the course, you know, closest to the pin, uh, putting contest. And then we have a great uh, live auction and silent auction. So it's not just golf for people like me with no talent. That's right. We can do other things. <laughs> yep, there's all kinds of ways to get involved. And we also, uh, we might do something a little bit different this year, but for the last couple of years, you've been able to support the club through the golf tournament, even if you're not a golfer, yeah. because we've done a helicopter golf ball drop. <laughs> and so that's fun. It's sort of like the raffle where you buy a buy a ball. It's got your number yeah. on it, and every, every number has a name okay. associated. And we have a helicopter that flies over the course and drops drops all the balls and the ball that gets in the hole or closest yeah. to the hole is the winner of whatever the prize might be this year. I think we've done up to $10,000 as the grand prize mm -hmm. on that one. So nope. even if you're not a golfer, there's still ways you can support <laughs> it. Now, when's that coming up? That's going to be this year. It's going to be on Monday, August 29th, up, like I said, up at the Kernwood in Salem. And I would say within the next like three to four weeks, the information will be available on our website. It'll be on the website. Yep. Well again, how would people find out about this? Exactly. Yep. The information will be on our website. We're still sort of finalizing things with the course, but it should be available within a few weeks. Now, do, can the public just, let's just say, want nothing to do with any of the activities. Can I just send a check to the club absolutely. or a credit card? Yep, absolutely. We have our, our website is www.bgcwoburn.org. Mm -hmm. um, it's very easy to donate. Right on the top of the page is a donate button. Um, we take a lot of people make donations in tribute to someone that they know or love or um, in memory of somebody who might have recently passed or just you know, to, to use wherever we need it most, which we're very, very appreciative. Individual donations are the heart of what our what keeps our, our business going. And our, our address, we're right at Charles Gardner Lane here in Woburn, and so we, you know, we take all kinds of money yep. at the club. So you can mail a check as well, and we'll be sure right away, you know, within a few days, you'll have your tax receipt too, so that um, you can use it for your write-off so, or your taxes. So obviously it's non-profit too. Absolutely. Yep. That's a great tax. One, we raise 1.7 million every year, and we spend 1.7 million every year. <laughs> no, it just sounds worthwhile to give. I mean, there's so many charities out there, but you're building a future for the children, especially the children in the city of Woburn. Absolutely. And we're, we're a local nonprofit. We're our own, you know, 501c3. And so all the money that we raise stays right here in Woburn, okay. um, right with the kids of Woburn. It doesn't go to, you know, a lot of people. Uh, we are an affiliate of Boys and Girls Clubs of America, but we are our own organization with our own board. And so the money stays right here in Woburn. And we're really proud. More than more than 85 cents of every donation goes right to the kids. Wow. Our administration and sort of what people call overhead is yeah. very, very low. Mo a lot of our donation, most of your donation goes right to the kids, right to the programs to, to where it needs needs it the most. Now, speaking of kids, what ages can join the club? Sure. So we actually, through our wide range of, of programs, whether it's the preschool or the teen program, we actually start at 2.9 years old for that preschool wow. program. Um, and then we actually have some child care programs for kids that are kindergarten. But the sort of traditional club that everyone thinks of and that what we've been speaking of most, that's eight years old. So the first day of the month you turn eight, you could come down and sign up. And you can stay a member all the way until you graduate from high school. So it's really unique, you know, we're very fortunate that we're able to see the kids grow up and the, the ones that stick with us, um, see them over time. And as a staff member at the club, it's really unique because if you're an educator, you see them for one year, you know, and then you, you might not see them again for a few years or ever again. But at the club, we get to see them year over year, watch them grow up, watch them mature. And it's, it's really special. I feel very fortunate to work for the club for that reason. Now, if I'm a child and I want to join the club, what would it cost me a year to become a member? Yep, so a membership to the club costs $25, and that's good for the whole school year. That's a year? The whole year, yep. And a scholarship is available upon a verbal request from a parent. Very simple to request a scholarship if you need it. Nobody's ever turned away from the club due to inability to pay. Now, obviously, this is a show on addiction. I know you've answered it different ways, but I want to emphasize and drive a point home here. Yep. For everything you've just said, why is it so important when you have all this available to stop the kids from getting into the cycle in the first place? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, we have talked a little bit about, about it, but you're right, that's why we're here today. And I think it's just really important that kids um, have a safe 
place to go, that they have relationships that they've built with their peers, with supportive adults. I think as kids get older, once you get into high school, post high school, there's so much going on. As you mentioned, Dave, you're in a social situation, something's getting passed around. Do you have the skills to be able to say no, or to be able to report it, or to mm. be able to, and so that's what we're trying to do. In everything that we do, everything that we do at the club, we're trying to build resilience, build strong character, build kids the confidence to be able to speak up, speak out, get some help if they need it, go to a trusted adult, whether that's a staff member at the club, a parent, a teacher, it doesn't matter. We're just, we just want them to be able to go to a trusted adult or a peer if they find themselves in trouble, they need some help and support. So every program that we offer at the club, whether it's sports, arts, the preschool, all the different things that we do, swimming, it's all about building that network, giving kids support and building their resilience so that when they do get older and find themselves in difficult times, in stressful times, they know they have people that they can count on who care about them and give them the skills and tools and courage to be able to say no, find help that they need. And that, that makes a lot of sense. I wanna bring one thing up. It's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. When I was growing up, my friends were my neighbor, the kids in the neighborhood, of course. You meet some kids in school, yeah, it's a recess. You're in class. You don't have time to get to know and socialize. Recess is 15 minutes. You can't really build a healthy relationship with peers and friends in 15 minutes and know what their likes are and what's going on. You go to the club, you're with them on the field, you're with them playing the game, you're in the coding room. You're meeting people with the same interests you do. Mm -hmm. So now I think that makes a great bond and a great, let's use the word, a great pool of resources to find friends other than the few kids in your neighborhood. That's and right. these are friendships that can last a lifetime. Right. Because they met you with same similar interests. Maybe you might go into business together. Maybe you might hang out. But it's a healthy environment. And it just gives you this opportunity to meet new people with the same beliefs of you and the same interests. Right. Versus the three kids that are my neighbors that, yeah, they're my neighbors, so I'll hang out, but we don't have a thing in common. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's one thing that's also unique about the club in that I, when I first started, I won't say how many years ago, but yeah. it was really unique to me. And, you know, we weren't so fortunate to still have a lot of the small neighborhood schools, you know, in the town that I grew up in, there was just one elementary school. So I knew every kid that was my age. It was a small yeah. town, but... Um, but in Woburn, the kids come from all of the schools to the club in yeah. the afternoon. We, every afternoon we have kids from every single school in Woburn. And so they get to meet friends that they maybe wouldn't meet until sixth grade or ninth grade. But at the club, they get to meet them much younger. And it really does help, I think, with that transition to middle school and then again to high school because those are tough times for kids. That's when a lot of stress happens when you move schools when you're getting older. And if you can go into sixth grade and you already know a lot of the kids from the other yeah. schools because you met at the club, That's a huge you've been advantage. engaged in service together, you've been on a team together, it really helps that transition and helps the kids be successful in those important transitions in life. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's really unique, and um, we're really proud of the work that we do. Now you've been doing this for, obviously, many years. Many years. Have you ever realized or even thought about the lives you've changed when you go home at night? Do you ever think of the fact that this kid, he came in, he had some issues, I got to know him, look at the path I set him down now and what he's accomplished. Do you even realize what you accomplish? Yeah, I mean, it's hard. It's definitely hard to sort of wrap your head around. Yeah. It gets overwhelming, you know, to think about it. But what we always say, you know, we have the best staff at the club, the best staff. We have a number of, of individuals who've been with us for, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years, many who grew up at the club. Yes. And so it really is um, when we talk about, you know, times get tough and especially over the past few years, it's been really difficult to, to sort of keep going. We've had to change our business model, you know, eight times, yeah. I think, in the last two years. And OK, how we can't do it the way we used to do because of public health yep. concerns. How can we do it? We had a, you know, when COVID first hit, we had a virtual club open yeah. within one week. The wow. kids had, you know, meetings online with their friends. We had daily workouts that they could do on Zoom with our gym director. Just, we're just so lucky to have the team that we have um, willing to pivot, transition, and as we say, do whatever it takes um, to help kids and help teens. And we always just say, it's just one kid at a time, you know? And when some, one, one of our kids or one of our teens is facing really hard times and you know, we're trying to talk them through it or work with the family, or maybe we're having a hard time because yeah. of something that's happening at the club, it's important for 
us as professionals, teachers, counselors, everybody who's working with young people to take care of yourselves and your own mental health. It's just one kid at a time, you know? Let's, get, let's deal with this one problem at a time, make sure he's set up for success, let's get his grades caught up, just kind of compartmentalize, and um, I try to keep those compartments when I get home too, because yeah. it does start to feel oh, yeah. overwhelming. So it's one task, one challenge at a time, and one kid at a time. In, in, in each of those, they grew up to be entire classes of kids, and they are our future. And so we just Absolutely. hope that the future of the community, if we can just make a positive difference on one child at a time, you know, uh, 200 children a day, <laughs> then, then the future of our community is bright. And I do believe the future of our community is bright. These young kids, what they have been through over the past couple of years, yes. it's a lot. And yeah. they are thriving and they are still doing their very, very best. And I think that if they can get through this, they're going to be able to do Absolutely. anything, anything. Before I wrap this up, a quick question. Sure. Do you have volunteer opportunities for people that might want to help out in the club? We do. With different skills? Can you just briefly explain what's available yeah, if somebody sure. wanted to help? Yeah, um, so we're always looking for people with, you know, a variety of skills. If you have a skill, if you really love playing the guitar and you want to share that with our kids, like, we welcome you to come down and do that. Um, you know, we mentioned, you know, the staff can only do so much. The more opportunities we have during those hours that we yeah. talked about earlier, the better. If you're really into soccer and you want to come down and help coach the kids in soccer, that's great. We also have um, volunteer opportunities. We have groups, so we have a lot of companies that will come, bring some of their employees together. Just a few weeks ago, we had a, an accounting firm that came down on a Saturday morning and helped us clean up our parking lot. Wow. Um, it's great, you know, little things like that. It was a hot, hot morning, too. So you so don't even need skill, just do, something yep. to help you out. Yep, if you have a group of people, we always have projects that we need done at the club, and so we're definitely always willing to take the help, whether you have a skill to share or you just want to kind of come down and help us with a task that needs to be accomplished at our facility. Do you have any final words on your own you'd like to say? Anything you may have missed that I didn't ask you? Um, no, I mean, I think I'm just, thanks for having me. It's, this has been great. I think that the club is a really important institution um, in the community. Very, very grateful for everybody's support, especially over these past couple of years. Um, the community has really turned up to support kids and support organizations like the clubs. Um, our partnership with the city, our partnership with Woburn Public Schools mm -hmm. has really been stronger than ever. We can't do this by ourselves. Obviously, so yeah. Our donors, everyone who's donated to the club, everybody who's supported our special events, um, we just, we just can't, can't thank everybody enough for their support for our, throughout our history, but particularly over the past couple of years. And I think our future is bright. I think that um, the pandemic really did expose some of the needs that are out there for kids, for child care centers, and I think the club has really done a great job of staying, staying relevant, and I know that we will long You've come a long too. way, believe me, I grew up in it. you come a long way. Yeah. Okay, well, obviously this is not just a great way to keep kids from entering the cycle of addiction to start with, but to establish new friendships while having a safe place to go after school instead of choosing to hang out on the streets. That is key. I would like to thank our guest, Julie Gage, for appearing today. As always, thank you for watching. Please share this program with your social media friends. If you or someone you know is suffering from a substance abuse disorder, you can contact the Massachusetts Substance Use Helpline, and that is toll free at 1-800-327-5050. The show can be seen on a rotating basis on Woburn Public Media stations, and on demand on their website and on YouTube. And one other thing, please like the channel. You get notified, you get to see what's coming up. So if you like it, please like, follow the show, follow the station. Other than my show, this station has a lot of great shows that are out there that help the public. So throw a couple of likes in there, follow it along. Now as always, I'd like to thank the great staff of Woburn Public Media for making this show possible. Please enjoy our closing theme, Rise Above the Noise by Firehut. Through the credits at the end for important contact information. This contact information has information how you can find some of the earlier shows we've done, other shows that interest you, and it's just a great way to catch up. There's now 30 shows out there, so I'm sure there's something that's going to interest you and help your child. So, for America in Crisis, Breaking the Cycle Addiction, my name is David Hunt. Again, thank you for watching. Watch all the way to the music stops. Thank you. Listen to the sound in the air Rise above the noise in the air 
sound not heard is what we be.